Hello grade 10s and welcome back to another functions video with me, Miss Martins. Please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I do loads of maths and physical sciences videos. In this question, I have two functions. They say g of x and they give me a x squared plus q. So I know that g of x is my parabola here. So I'm going to highlight that one in green and they label the, the, the function g. So that's perfect. And then we know that f of x equals mx plus c, that is the straight line function. We can see that these functions intersect, in other words, they cut each other at two points, labeled r and labeled t. They also tell me that r and s are the x-intercepts of g, and t is the y-intercept of g. Now, I know that questions like the ones on the screen below me, questions that you guys struggle with and you need help with, so make sure to stay tuned for the video. So we build up to those questions. We're going to be doing them at the end. So make sure you watch the intermediate questions because they're going to help you understand those more difficult questions, questions you need help with. Right, 5.1 asks for the range of g. Now remember, g, our function g is our parabola. So it's this one over here. Ooh. It's this function over here, and they want to know the range of g. And remember, guys, range is just a word to describe all the output values, so the y values. If you look at the function, we can see that the y values go all the way down here. You see the graph extends here, down into the negatives here for y. You see the little arrows over there, the little arrows over there. And the highest of the graph goes in terms of y values, if you look at the y axis, is 8. So the answer for that is y will be less than or equal to 8. Then they want the coordinate of r. We were told in the beginning, beginning of the question that s and r are the x-intercepts of this parabola, and it's in the form y equals ax squared plus q. We can see that t is the y-intercept of the parabola. It's where the graph cuts the y-axis. It's also the turning point of that parabola. Um, the line where x equals 0 is also that line of symmetry for the parabola. So therefore, my r coordinate is negative 2 and 0 because s is 2 and 0. The next question wants us to calculate the values of a and q, and it is three marks. Remember, g of x, so the parabola. So g of x, they told us it's equal to a x squared plus q. Okay, remember, a will represent the shape of my graph. We know that a is going to be negative because this graph is a sad face graph. We need to find the value of a, however, but immediately we can find q because we know that q is the y-intercept of the parabola, which in this case is 8. So q is 8. So we, that's a very good place to start. If you know q and you have a, another coordinate on the graph, so here we have s, that is on the parabola, we can sub s into y and x. Remember, g of x is basically your y. It's your output value. If we sub in 2 and 0 into the place of x and y, we can solve for a. So I've gone ahead and I've done that for us. So you write your equation of the parabola first. That is this one over here. Then what I did is I subbed in my value for q, which we said was 8. It's the y-intercept. That's over there. Then I take another point on the parabola. I would use s because it was given to us. You may use r, but just remember, we figured out r. If you get r wrong by some re for some reason, you will get the a value wrong. So I subbed in 2 and 0. 2 goes in the place of x. Remember your brackets. Remember to square it. Um, 0 goes in the place of y. And we sub, we solve for a. a is negative 2. There we go. We found the values of a and q. The next question asks us to, t to determine the equation of f. We know that f is our straight line function, our linear function, and we know that it has the equation in the form of y equals mx plus c. That was given to us in the question. Another thing that we know by looking at the graphs and analyzing them is that we know the y-intercept of our function f. The y-intercept, in other words, where the straight line cuts the y-axis, is also at 8. So we know that c is 8, because remember, in our standard form, y equals mx plus c, c is your y-intercept. So we know that. We know that it's 8. That's fantastic. If we look at our graph, we also know another point on f. We know this point over here. We obtained that in a previous question, and that was negative 2 and 0. So what I did is I decided to sub in that point. Remember, this is the x. 
this is the y. I decided to sub that into my equation. So in the place of x, I put negative 2 in brackets. In the place of y, I put 0. And I solved for m, which is my gradient. You may also use your gradient formula, which is your gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then you use two points. So my one point would be 0 and 8. And my other point would be negative 2 and 0. So you can see over here that I subbed in my C value, my Y intercept. I subbed in my points and I got M is 4. Now remember, the question didn't ask me to solve for M or to find M. They wanted the equation. So they wanted the equation of F. So it's in the form of Y equals MX plus C. You fill in your M, you fill in your C. And then there we go. You've got your answer. There's your M, your value of 4. There's your C, your value of 8. In 5.5, this is our first relatively difficult question, and they say use the graphs to determine the value or values of x, for which f of x is equal to g of x. So where the graphs are equal to one another, where the graphs cut each other, where they intersect. So if you look at my picture, if you look at my image, we can see that the graphs intersect at two points over here. So they want to know for which value of x, so what are my x values, where these graphs intersect. So I know that where x is negative 2, over here, that is the first point of intersection, that is the first point where f of x is equal to g of x. Same thing over here, this is my second point of intersection, but be careful they wanted x values. So it's where x is equal to 0. Here's your x-axis. This is where x is 0, not the y values. You have to mention both points in order to get your marks. Now this question over here is quite a challenging question, and it's an interpretation question. You really need to understand the wording. You really need to understand the notation and what it means. So it says use the graphs to determine the value or values of x. So again, we're looking at x values. Our answer is going to be x must be greater than or less than or equal to. So x values for which x multiplied by g of x is less than or equal to zero. So I wrote there less than or equal to zero. In other words, negative. If something's less than zero, it is a negative. Now I wrote here, x refers to x values. g of x refers to the y values, the output the output values for the graph g of x and g of x is our parabola so i'm going to highlight that we're looking for the y values of g of x multiplied by the x values and that product must give me negative numbers if my x is so remember it's x times g of x must be negative basically now the first way to think about this is Something multiplied by something must give me a negative. We know that if my x values are negative and my g of x is negative, that's not going to give me a negative. That's going to give me a positive. So this is wrong. We're not looking for values where x is negative and g of x is negative. But if I look for where x's are negative and where g of x is positive, then think about this. This is basic maths. A negative multiplied so let's say negative multiplied by positive that is going to give me a negative value which is what i'm looking for i'm looking for values less than zero now you still need to understand what this means so x's are negative so where are my x's negative x's are negative here however my y my y my output values for g of x must be positive Okay, positive. And where are my output values for G positive? Definitely not down here. We can see that all of these are negative Y values for G. But here, my G of X values are positive. So for this section of the graph, this one here, that is where the product of those two things will be less than zero. I hope that makes sense. So between X being negative two, and x being zero between those two values. So x must be greater than or equal to 
negative 2, but less than or equal to 0. That is the first part of our answer. Now, for the second part of our answer, we need to consider where x is positive, which would be over here, and where g of x is negative. Okay, so x is positive where I've highlighted yellow. g of x is negative. Okay, I'm going to highlight the section that's rele uh, relevant here, over here where you see green, because g of x, remember that's the y values for the function g, the parabola, that's where it's negative. Before v coordinate x is equal to 2, g of x, the values of g of x is positive. After x is equal to 2, you can see that the, the green graph, the parabola, goes underneath the x-axis, making it negative. So basically, we have highlighted it green. So remember, we're looking for where the product of x and g of x is negative. So it's where the x's are positive, which I've highlighted in yellow, and where g of x is negative, which I've circled over there in green. So basically, everything from this point onwards that will suit my question that is exactly what we're looking for x must be greater than or equal to two there's my complete and final answer for 5.5 both of these need to be there in order for you to get your full marks please let me know what other videos you'd like to see in future on my channel what other exam questions would you like me to do comment down below and don't forget to share this video with your friends and subscribe for more maths and science